Welcome to MetalOp.com. This will be a manual use of MetalOp. Um, first thing we do is need to enable the macros, which puts a cut list menu tab in this version of Excel, which I do believe is Excel 2003. Uh, the first thing we will do, um, first thing I always do is save the file so we don't overwrite your master file. And then we will just on the first tab. You know, which is the master fab sheet, we will enter just basic information. This information was from, uh, will be from the test sample I did. for the data extraction with AutoCAD. Um, but this will be a uh, manually entering all of the information. Finish. Your project number, who it's by, the date. I have two fields for the finish. Um, you, know, you don't need to use that. You don't have to use it. Uh, the main reason I had two of them was, like, for painted finishes, there's a lot of information a lot of times, a lot of um, paint numbers, uh, UCS numbers. So I originally put it in with two fields. And when a cut list is generated, it takes information from both fields. So we will start. Um, first thing I'll do is clear this because the tag information will vary on the sheets. Um, then I go through and add my elevations on my sample project. You know, it's elevation A through H. It was G1, G2, and H. Uh, if you have more elevations, that's where you'll need to add uh, more columns. To do that, I generally try to stay in between the first column in the last column. So if I make new columns, it's in between that. So I highlight the column tab, right mouse click, copy over the, the column letters, right mouse click again, and insert copied cells. And then you'll see where it has added more columns. Same way with rows, you do the same thing. I try to stay between the top row where the part information starts and the last row where the information stops. The reason I stay away from copying that row is a lot of times this dark line when up copying and formulas can get messed up. So if you make new rows, go in between. So it would be copy and insert copied cell. So we have more. But we start entering. Uh, let's see, we got 
everything's pretty much started. We'll fill these in later as we create tabs for all of our different extrusions. Okay, let's start creating uh, new fab sheets. Uh, we'll start from the master fab sheet after we've input all the elevations and main data. Uh, we'll start by uh, right mouse clicking over the tab and we'll do copy, so create a copy. Move this up. I want it in front of the master fab sheet, so I'll just say OK. So there we put, there's the master, and then this is the new tab, and we'll double click on that and input our extrusion number. Then we will enter the description. The extrusion number. Then we're ready to start entering parts. Uh, since I have this, I already have the uh, data. So we'll just start entering the part lengths and the finished length inches. The cut lengths will be talked about in a minute uh, when we get to miter parts. And notice I have the same length twice. This is one of the mitered parts, um, which we will eventually go through and add miter information. Uh, so I would have one star for a simple miter, where it adds a little bit more material so it can be block sized to be cut later. Um, so our shop can uh, miter cut them later. Let's see, we've got. Actually, is an elevation C for last one. Um, then we will. You know, I've got all the links, so I know how many I'll need. I'll start putting in tag information. Um, since it's millions, I just use M. You know, M1, M2, M3. And enter tag information. Uh, then I manually enter uh, the tag information into AutoCAD uh, or write it by hand onto an elevation so I can make copies uh, for distribution for the shop and the field so they know where these cut pieces go. Um, let's see, on this mitered, it was, this one was mitered, this one was mitered, and this one is mitered at one end, but it is mitered in two different directions, so I call that a, a more complicated miter. So I'll give it a double star, uh, which adds just a little bit more material. And then in the remarks, uh, I will give the sketch information. Oops. And the difference in the sketch is the more complicated miter. Let me further explain these miters. Uh, when you select the field, 
where the information is added, there is the formulas, and you can add, you can change the formulas, you know, by adding more material. Here it's adding three inches for one star, and there is four inches for two stars. So there is a clarification on the mitered information. Okay, now that all my mullion information is entered, now I'm going to cheat because um, I'm going to do the pocket filler next, which is basically the same information from the mullion. So I will just uh, right mouse click over the tab, make a new, so I want it after the mullion. So you can see, so now I have the mullion, now I have the second mullion sheet, but I will change that to the pocket filler extrusion to and call that you know pocket filler. Go to change my description. Now you know my pocket filler, all of the change the tag and actually it's going to be 1 through 6 so the 89 is okay of course the quantities because the mullions had jams and intermediate mullions so there's not as many pocket fillers exist, so I'll delete it, this one's 131, and that will be 3, 4, 5, 6, and quantity's right, right, quantity, so this is 4, 12, 4, 16, 16 and 48. And then my pocket fillers are done. Okay, now that we have a couple fab sheets made, we will go through and show some of the Metal Ops features. Um, by default, I have a 288 inch stock length in there. Um, most manufacturers have 24 foot as their standard length. You can change that to any length you need or that you want to order or that you have received. Uh, but we're going to stick with 288 for now. Uh, the first thing you can do is just do an optimization. 214 stock lengths. You can do that for estimating. Puts 214 in there. Tells you your scrap rate. Next, we will do a cut list. Um, there are two options, linear and stack. Stack's the main one I use. Uh, that follows similar to like Conier's estimating program. Linear was another, similar to another optimizer I've seen. Uh, we'll start with linear, and as it generates the cut list, it's each stock length. You know, it's one stock length, 288 inches. These are the pieces you cut out of it. Each one is its own stock length. Go back to the fab sheet. You know, it still puts in the number. If it didn't, if something ended up changing, it would have filled in the new stock lengths. Uh, the next would be stack. This way, it doesn't use as much paper. Uh, you'll see that it's combining stock lengths into groups 
like this one has be two stock lengths and each stock length will have one piece at 150, one piece at 134. So here we got 45 stock lengths and these are the two pieces at 113 and then you have a 60 inch drop. And in the last tab is the miscellaneous. Uh, that's where you can change your saw blade thickness. You can do end cuts if you prefer. Uh, I know that 288 is what I am, is usable, so that's what I use. Um, and then you can change your discard length. Um, and then uh, units, everything I do is based on inches. Um, you can do metric, where it's where you would put centimeters or millimeters or whatever you use. And the last two are the import Excel data export tag information to AutoCAD, which is under a different video. So those are the basic features. I hope you enjoy it. See, I wanted to show you how to enable the macros in Excel 2007. Uh, in most of my videos, I'm using Excel 2003, which is an older version. The first thing we will do is open uh, our test metal op uh, and then the first thing that comes up is a security warning um, showing it has disabled the macros you select options enable this content and say ok so it has run the macros uh, and then along with that it instead of putting cut list in the menu tabs above it puts the tab called add-ins select that and that's where the cut list menu is added so you can optimize or do whatever operations you need to do so there is how you enable the macros in Excel 2007